All right, so I'm David. Now, I do have a YouTube channel if you've seen me on YouTube. No, maybe Bonsai Works. Um, so today we're going to style this tree. We're going to transform it into a bonsai. This just is a shrub at the moment, right? Just, there's not much to it. What are we going to do with it? How, we, how do we go about styling it? Um, it's a little, it's a juniper procumbens or prostrata, they call it. Pretty common, pretty easy, very good for beginners, very good to learn. Um, do classes on, so we run classes using this kind of material. Um, but it's all about, I think bonsai sometimes is all about imagination too. Use your imagination to create something is good too. You don't have to always create um, the same looking tree. Be creative, see what you got, see how the tree is. Um, so with these things, the first thing I do normally is get out of the pot, just to take, just so I can see a bit better, because the pot kind of blocks your, your, your idea of the tree. And now I try and comb around the base. All right, the reason I comb around the base is so I can look at the roots, the spread of roots on top. Because sometimes you don't know where the roots start, those, those spread of roots start. The root spread here, when you see how, you've seen some of the trees and the roots they've got on the, on the top. When you've got nice root spread, it makes the tree look old. Very old, like it looks old and, and interesting. And, um, you know, it's called, the Japanese term is nabari. If you ever hear that word, nabari is the root spread. The big old roots, the, the, the better the roots, the older the tree looks. It looks like it's been there for ages, growing forever. Like the big figs in the botanical gardens, I don't know if you see them, they're hum humongous, right? <clears throat> so that's what we look for. On these junipers, it's pretty hard to see. It's not really that easy to see on these guys. Um, but I will have a look. Now, don't think I know what this tree is going to look like. I have no idea yet. Okay, so don't, don't think I even I know. I'm just going to get rid of this um, little stick that's keeping it up. Now, I'll work, try and work as fast as I can because I want to finish styling it for you guys. And, but if you've got questions when I'm doing the work, happy to answer them, so don't be shy. I just want to get rid of this stick, though. So as I thought, there's not much of an abari. But I will dig down just to see. So if now, if I did that, now you can actually see kind of the trunk. You see the trunk how it is. You can see a bit, a bit inside. So this tree has some nice lower branches, really low, a bit too low maybe. Um, there's not much in the middle, and there's a bit of a top on there. So it's a matter of now thinking, what are we going to do with this tree? Can we come up with some sort of design? Can we come some sort of tree, some sort of element? The next thing I try and do, see how there's all this dead stuff? Just clean it out. Not too hard. I usually clean it out with my fingers. I, I reckon it's about five to seven, maybe, years old from cutting. This is probably grown from cutting. Yeah. So, and this is the nursery. I know this nursery. It's like a wholesale nursery. They grow them pretty fast, but still, it takes five to seven years. Yeah, you can definitely find these in nurseries. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Um, tools wise, tool wise, these are pretty much the main tools I use. Probably, maybe that one. These are the four main tools I use. I'll explain them. This one's a branch cutter. See how it's a very unusual shape? It's got like a beak on it. When you cut, this is from cutting branches, branches off the trunk. Now, when I cut a branch that's close to the trunk, it leaves a concave cut. So when it heals, it'll heal straight. If you go and use scissors just to cut the branch off, it'll make a lump when it heals. It looks terrible. So you want a nice flat finish. So these are really good. We chop everything with these, like really big stuff. I'll use it. Um, some scissors, of course, just to trim trim the tree. No problem. Easy. Wire cutters. Now, these are really good and they're specialty because when you work with bonsai, you have to get right in to cut the wire sometimes off the branches. And you can't use normal wire cutters. These are really good to get in there. And just pliers, don't have to be, don't have to have these pliers, but any pliers are really good. A lot of the work I do, you can, instead of bending the wire with your hands, you can, you can bend it with pliers. I, I do other things where you need to twist and turn with these. But also this helps create, creating gin or dead wood on the tree. So if you want to kill a branch off, these are really good to do that. Now you've probably seen the gins, like the dead wood on the trees and stuff like that in the show. That's what we do. That's what we do. So they're the, they're the tools I'll use today. And the first things first, I want to try and get some, I want to see a bit of the tree. Now, all I'm doing is taking off little, 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 you know, little sticky branches, nothing, nothing too big. 
I like the main branches. I'll keep them on. So like this guy, I'll leave him alone for now. But anything that's really small and not really, not really required. So I'll get these. It's a bit hard to show you, but I'll get these and I'll. <clears throat> so there's some really small stuff in here. I'll go right on the right on the trunk and cut them off. Okay, and it, and it will leave a little bit of a concave, which is nice. So that's really all I'm doing right now is cleaning up some of this so I can see what I'm doing. And you always want to clean the base because the base is all the, the best features. Like the base of the trunk is really important to have a nice, nice, interesting tree. Has anyone got a juniper at home? Junipers, this this type of juniper. You got this one, this species, this similar one. Yeah, they're a bit prickly to work with sometimes. <laughs> they actually get all, I get all these rashes on it out of my hands afterwards, just because they're a little bit prickly. But it goes away. As I said, these are excellent for beginners to learn to learn the structure, to learn wiring. Wiring is critical to, to making a good bonsai. Okay, so if you don't like wiring a tree, don't don't do bonsai. <laughs> Oh, well, you can, but you probably have to stick with more deciduous trees. Conifers have to be wired. You just can't achieve the result you want without wire. Okay, so I see something now quite interesting. I did a bit of a clean out, and you can now see the main trunk, and you can see a side tree branch here too. Okay, so I've got two things in mind now. I can make a, a twin trunk tree. I'll probably use both trunks to make twin trunk. Or I can do maybe a little semi-cascade with a bit of a gin at the top. Um, I'm not sure 100% which way I'll go. I think I like maybe the semi-cascade, but because um, the twin trunk, it will look good, but it will have to be a tall tree still. But I might do a semi-cascade because I really like semi-cascades. <laughs> they look really good and, and interesting when you do them. And I, I do like that look. So all I'm doing is still cleaning up foliage. Now, you don't have to work this fast, okay? Take your time, look at your tree, study your tree. See what see what you can imagine can happen with the tree. Now I'm just trying to find how I can do how I can how I can wire and position this tree. Flexibility, it's pretty flexible. See that? Look how much I can bend it. I can actually keep going. I keep going. So don't be scared. Okay, sometimes. When they get thicker than this, it's not as easy to do. But at the moment, it's pretty easy. Pretty pretty easy to do right now. So all I'm testing is flexibility because I want to figure out which way I'm going to create this tree. The other thing is when you when you get a tree and it's in a pot like that, don't think that that's how you have to keep it. You can adjust the angles, play around with it, you know, because eventually when you repot it, you repot it into this angle. So don't ever think you just have to look at the tree at that angle. Okay, so I'm just trying to think if I do if I do that, I've got more of a cascading branch now. If I put it on this angle, this is a bit tall, but I can wire it and so on. So that's why I'm playing around with angles at the moment. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm thinking I might do a little semi-cascade. If that doesn't look good, I'll do the twin trunk. But I need to apply wire now so I can see how I can build the tree, design the tree. Now, who's wired bonsai before? Have you put wire on trees before? Yes, yes, good. First time? Pretty easy. Um, but you just got to practice. Well, bonsai is practice. Learning the techniques is just practice. So... I want to be able to at least bend this 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 branch in here. I want, to lend, I want to bend this branch just to get a bit more movement, and I want to try and bend this branch as well. Now I can use one wire to, to do the both to do the to do the job. So by using one wire, I wire the trunk, and I can wire this branch as well. Okay, so it's just a it's just a technique. So I'm going to use a really heavy gauge six mil, only because I want to try and bend the trunk as well a little bit. <clears throat> Now I'm just trying to imagine in my head how much I need. That's a bit of a tricky one. Don't I won't try and tell you now how to do it. It's probably you probably when you use thicker gauge wire, you need extra long. Um, usually it's a third longer than the branch you want to wire, so a third longer. 
when you use thicker, you probably have to go a half more. So if a branch is this big, a third is about that much, but a half is about that much, okay? So that's a rough guide. So let's see how we go with this. So I'm going to go and try and wire both with one, okay? So that's about, that's plenty for that, and that's about plenty for that. So now use two hands, always use two hands when you're wiring, okay? Use your left, oh, I'm a right-hander, so I'll use my left to anchor the tree, hold, hold the wire against the trunk. Usually, or sometimes I have to use my left, but it's a bit harder. <laughs> and you just give it a good wire around, about 45 degree angles, about. I sometimes do a bit tighter because if you put wire on it to be tighter and you want to put big bends into it, the, the wire acts like a tourniquet. Think of a tourniquet on your leg, tight, nicely tight. I can bend it without breaking the branch, okay? When it's tighter, the coils are tighter, less likely to bend, break the branch when I bend it, okay? If you use the spacing too wide, there's a big gap there to, that can break. So that's why I use slightly tighter than normal. That's the thickest wire I'll put on this tree. I won't put anything thicker than this, so you don't have to watch me do the thick one anymore. All right. So I'm not going to, as I said to you, I wasn't going to use the whole lot. Remember, I'm only going to use a portion of it. So now I'm just going to play around with, now I can actually try and bend the, bend the branch now. Now I again hold with one hand and bend with the other. So I bend with my thumb pressed with this finger, put some pressure, and you can start to bend the tree. Now I do probably like this side of the tree where I'm looking. I've picked my front of the tree. I'm thinking it's this side. Not sure about this side because it's a bit bare, but um, I'm thinking this side's better. So what I'm doing is using my thumb here, pressing against where I've wired, and I can bend the tree slightly. Then if you go further down the tree, bend it more. And down so I can go different ways so I've bent that sideways and down very just how I want to imagine the tree to be now it's a little bit tricky because the soil levels there but we got a good we've got a good little tree right now I'll take care of these later now the big thing is if I can bend this because I've got the little, imagine this is like a little cascade branch just out here. I've got to get this kind of more in here. So now it's a bit of a, use a, use a bit of muscle to try and get it around. Usually it does go around. Usually. Yeah, practice. As I said, wiring is all about practice and trying to bend and just practice and practice and practice. It's always done slowly, slowly. Slowly. Always looking to see if the trunk, if it cracks or anything like that. You don't want that to happen. No. So what I'm going to have to use probably, uh, I'll show you how to use a guy wire. I'll show you how to do that. It's really important. That helps you. You put two pieces of wire between branches and you pull them together. It's a really good little technique. I'll show you how to do that as well. But I think we can get that looking good. Now I'm just positioning the tree how I see it. So just getting the angle right. Cool. All right, I'm gonna do more wiring. So if you've got questions, happy to answer. Now the other thing is I pluck any, now that I've got the structure, the tree will be about this big with this cascade branch, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of show you that. It'll be this big with this branch as a little semi-cascade. I have to wire all this and clean it up. But now I know my structure, my front, my position. So I've set the position of the tree. Now I can actually clean up the branches without before wiring. Now cleaning the branches is a matter of cleaning anything going downwards. You don't want anything going down. You want things to be up and sideways, okay? Up and sideways. So that's one. That's my first step almost. I start. I imagine this could be my, my branch over here and I start to just underneath pluck, just pluck underneath, don't pluck on top. 
just underneath. You can feel it and you can see it. And when I'm done, you can actually probably see it's all nice and clean now. Getting clean underneath, see? Everything's on the, on the top of the tree. I haven't cut the length of it yet. because I've left the length. I'll be reducing it eventually. But I need to know how big of a tree I'm going to have before I do that. So is anyone a member of the club or are you just new people just visiting the show? Just visiting the show? Just visiting the show? Yeah, so we do have um, we do have a bonsai club, and we're located in Albafeldi in near Essendon or Essendon Albafeldi. Um, our meetings are the first Monday of the month, so it just happens that the Monday coming is the meeting night. So, um, and I'm doing a demonstration, another one, but I'm doing it on black pine. So, so a bit different. Black pine's a bit more complex and harder, but they look spectacular. You know, you can get a spectacular tree, and it's more around of. The black pines, the, the, the talk I'm going to give is more around how to take it from, you've grown it for a while, how do you get it from that to the first styling of a black pine? Not, not a beautiful black pine and how do you maintain it? It's that transition phase. It's really difficult sometimes. So that's, that's the talk I'll be giving, spruiking my own demonstration. <laughs> All right. All right, now I'm going to put a bit of wire more, some more wire. So as I said to you, bonsai, if you don't like wiring, it's going to be hard to do bonsai. Every tree in there has pretty much had wire on it, okay, at some stage in its life. Did anyone buy anything today? Everyone? Everyone bought something? Yes, I know you guys bought. Not you guys yet? No, you're still deciding. Yeah, it's just irresistible sometimes. So I found the club. I um I discovered the club, I should say. Um, when I was first starting out in bonsai, I saw, oh my god, there's a bonsai show in. It used to be in Yarraville. I was like, oh my god, in Yarraville, right? It's like I got to go to it. I got to go to it. And I just got hooked. And it was, and I was 22 then, and that's 25 years later. I'm still there, and I'm president of the club now for like 20 years. But that doesn't matter. But the fact is that I'm still there and I'm still doing it and I'm still, and that's the best thing with a club. I'm not telling you to join. I'm more telling you it keeps you motivated. It keeps you enjoying it, especially when you, especially when you're, um, can share ideas with people who are like minded. Um, we're not all crazy, you know, it's we're actually, you know, we're actually, you know, everyone just loves it. We're all in the same boat. Um, and you get to learn from some of the best around. Like we really have some of the best people in Australia doing bonsai in our club. So. Um, and that's it. You stay motivated. We get international people come out. We get, you know, the really big names come out usually. Before COVID, it was easy. Now it's much harder. Um, but we still, we still try and do that encouragement. We have demonstrations, workshops, and then you can, you know, buy stuff at, you know, really cheap prices and things like that. And if you're members, you could have come Friday night and had a first pick of the sales area. See, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a good deal. That's a good deal to have. But anyway, it's all about learning and sharing in the club. We just like to learn, share as much as we can, and do bonsai. And that's what we love. Did you guys like the show? Which, which trees did you vote for in the show? Who liked what? Did you have a vote? Did you vote the, the, for the trees yet? Yeah. Anyone put their votes in? You haven't been in there yet? What did you vote for? Oh, yeah. They're all pretty good. Oh, very good. I don't know what the numbers were, but I know some of the trees. Yeah, black pine's a big favourite usually. Anyone else? Too scared, too scared to say who you voted for? It's all right. You win a prize if you get picked out, so it's pretty good. And the prizes are pretty good too. How's the maples looking there? Pretty nice. The maples are looking good, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of... Um, I mainly style, mainly work with... Um, I work with every tree, but at the moment I really am enjoying... Um, I do love my Shimpaku juniper. It's a slightly different juniper uh, than this. It's on the raffle table. It's that kind of juniper. Have a look at the raffle, and that's the that's the tree I really like to work on. It's um and my mini. My, I've got a mini display of five little ones. That's that's my little display. I like small trees sometimes. Uh, they're really really resilient, and they've, the foliage is much softer to work with. It doesn't give you rashes after doing it. Anyone else vote for a tree? Not yet? No? It's okay, you can share. 
I like to know what people like. Did anyone see that massive Maluka? Did you guys see the big, huge Maluka paperback? Yeah. Huge. Oh, it's massive and stunning tree. So now I've kind of positioned this branch as a cascade branch, but it's very bushy. So I'm just giving it a little trim. Now, I don't trim like a hedge. I actually come in and go, so some of these are long. I come in and find the actual branch part and cut it at the branch point. So it's only one cut. It's not, if I trim, if I do this, if I trim like a hedge, it's about 20 cuts on there rather than one cut there. Okay, you only have one point that's going to, a little bit of brown off when you cut. Otherwise, I have 20 points of brown off. It looks horrible. And it's not good for the tree. So that's all I'm doing, going in, finding the branch bit and cutting it off. So very important with junipers, you don't do the hedge trimming thing. You actually go in there with scissors and cut them properly. And by doing that, you're just making it nice and clean and padded and, you know, get those pads you want. You know, you heard about the pads and clouds. That's all I'm trying to do. Now, with this tree, after I, re after I work on it, I won't repot it straight away. I'll wait until maybe August when it becomes spring again and I can repot it then. But if you do too much on it, you know, you're less likely to, you're less likely for it to, to survive, okay? So very important, don't do too much to a tree at one stage. If you're going to repot it, repot it, but don't, don't trim it. If you want to work on it and so on, don't repot it. Okay, just give it, give it a chance to recover. Um, otherwise, yeah, not going to be happy for everyone. I think bonsai is quite easy to look after. People say it can be hard. Get, just make sure you water the tree. <laughs> you know, just watering helps. You know, give it some water. Um, give it some sunshine. <laughs> It's it's not too hard. It's quite easy. Yeah, fertilize if you want to. I mean, um, if you remember, sometimes I say say to people, if you remember to fertilize, then do it because that means you haven't done it in a while, so it's good to do it. But if you want to stick to a regimen, you know, in springtime you can do it every, you know, at, at a minimum once a month usually, maximum once every fortnight or so. But you wouldn't do more than that. And just a light feed of anything you've got. Don't be too fussed about has to be a specific fertilizer of some sort. You know, just just do whatever. Do whatever you've got, you know. Whatever's on sale, I sometimes do. Whatever's on sale, it, yep, I'll buy, I'll have some of that, thanks. You know, it's not... As I said, it's quite easy. Keep the water up to them. Keep them in sunshine if they love the sun. If you've got figs, just keep them out of the frost. That's about it. You know, don't let the figs get frost. But these junipers, they live in full sun at my place. All my maples live in full sun. I like to protect them a little bit in summer if, if I'm if going to have really hot days. That's a bit of shade cloth, you know. It's nothing more than that, really. All right, so now you can kind of see this branch. Can you see how nicely this branch is kind of shaped? All the little ones have been wired, and it's a rough position of a nice semi-cascade branch or that first nice branch just, just there, just sitting out there, and it's nicely, very roughly, but you can see the structure. Okay, now I'm going to work on this top half. Now, I need to wire this before I put a guy wire. Now, you'll see why. I have to wire the branches before I put the guy wire. Now, if I put a wire connecting here to here and pulled it down, I won't be able to wire these branches then. It'll be in the way. I'll show you what I mean by that. So, I'm just going to wire these branches up. And we're almost done. It's not that, not that long to go now. That was pretty quick. Well, for a demo anyway. Yep. Hey, mate. Hey, Greg. Yeah, come close so you can't see from the back. <laughs> Greg's, he's my bestie. He's going to always give me, give me good <laughs> reviews. <laughs> yeah, they know. <laughs> uh, it's good fun. I did that channel just because I thought, hey, I've been doing bonsai a while, but there's no Melbourne, no one in Melbourne doing videos. No one, no one actually showing Melbourne conditions and everyone's, um, into international and I've, yeah. I've worked with so many international i've worked with bjorn he's great i don't know if you know bjorn he's been here to australia and he's just been awesome and i learned so much off him and it's like you know you learn so much and you've got to share it you can tell you can tell yeah like, you like, just got to share i like that new guy bjorn. oh yeah that one that's a good try yes yes still got it yeah 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 that one it's an old one but they're still there yeah 
I've done a black pine with him, and I don't have it in the show this year, but I reckon next year it's going to make it, and it's going to look good. He's talented, isn't he? He's great. So, so that's the thing. With beauty for the club is we bring internationals, and you can do workshops with them. So we do workshops with them, you know, like spend the day working with them, like six people, eight people in a class, and he just goes around your trees and imagine a table of eight of you around like this, and he just goes along each station and, and so on. So Bjorn's been great. We've had other internationals out. A bit harder now, as I said. Uh, you know, they're a bit more reluctant to come out, but it's starting to be get better. So best way to learn is from people who are better than you. Okay, so remember that. You don't, you don't learn from people less. You learn from people better than you. And in the club, we've got some of the best. Like Quentin Valentine is probably one of the best, probably the best in Australia. Quentin, he's just, his stuff in there is just... No, no, that's, that's not his. His is the Malaluka, if you saw that Malaluka. Yeah. That's crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, he's got some amazing, amazing trees. There's some brilliant, brilliant guys in in Australia in this club. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good this year. I am happy. Yeah, you can see me smiling. I was pushing, I was pushing the club members to really up their game. Every year they get better and better, and we we've got now higher stands. So I'm in higher the the backgrounds are really high now. So I want people to put their stands. So you probably know some stands are quite high. But when you walk past, you don't have to bend down. You just look at the tree straight on, right? Mm-hmm. Totally different. You look up into it. Yeah, and totally different look. If you had them down here, I don't care bother squatting down. And that tree gets missed. You'll probably notice it. You'll probably see the ones that are low down. You probably just quickly walk past them, right? But if anything that's on a big stand right in your eye, you just stand there and look. So that's one thing I've tried to really implement this year. Really want to get the club better and better all the time. All right. How many brown brown? One, two, three, a few more branches. Almost done. I think it's the last wire. Yeah, on YouTube it looks so quick, right? I tell you, it takes me hours. Like some trees I sit there 25 hours wiring, you know, just they're huge, but they need they need they need the work, especially transformation trees. I do a lot of transformations. Uh, from bushes to you know, first styling, they're like, what the hell? And some of my customers come into me and I show them the tree and I, they, they give it to me, it's like this. And then when they come and pick it up, I put it on a stand in, at the front door. And as soon as they open the front door, they go, that's not my tree. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> and they're like, what? I've had guys tear up, guys, fully grown men tear up. They could not believe it. You know, I'm not patting myself on the back, but you know what I mean? It's just, that's, but that's what bonsai brings out in people. Like some people, it's an art form, I think, anyway. And, um, I really love it. And it's, you can see the people here, they're all nuts, but we're all nuts together. It's good. You know, it's, we just love it. And we're very passionate about what we do. Always. I like what you do on YouTube. You don't cut nothing off you have to be worried all the sort of all that. Nothing worth cutting something off. Can't put it back. No glue. Can't glue it back, right? All right. Now, now you can't. Now, I've wired everything here. Okay. Did you see how wide most of these branches? They're all wired up. Okay. So, this is going to, this is how tall the tree is going to be, but you can't see it right now, what I'm going to do. But because I've wired it now, I can actually put what's called a guy wire. And I'll show you that technique now. It's really important, but it's, a, it's probably a little bit of an advanced technique, but it's a good little technique to know, okay? Especially when you can't physically bend the branch without enough with the wire. Like, the wire is not thick enough to bend it, so I'm going to help that wire by, by using a guy wire. And I'll compress it. The Austin's tree you done was that big here for a seat. It was that high, mate. You pulled that down to about. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Rob. He, it's one of our members. Yeah, it's one of our members' trees. He, he's, he's loving it. He's actually, if you come on Monday, oh, no, I know you won't be, but Monday I'm doing a black pine demo, and he, they're his trees that I'm doing. So he's going to love, he's loving it. He can't wait because he gets it done for free. <laughs> I'll show you this technique. This is a really good technique. I didn't expect to show you this, but you're going to, you're going to know how to guy wire and you're going to know how to gin after I finish this as well. And I'll explain what that is soon too. All 
All right. See how I've got these two pieces of wire, right? Can you guys see that? Barely. Now I've looped it under this bit of wire down here at the bottom. It's a really thick piece of wire down here. But I've threaded it through the wire in between the trunk here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this off. This is where I'd use my gin flies. Remember I said the gin flies? You don't have to do gin, but you need it to make be able to twist the wire. Is that your bit of data in the initiator? Radiata one? Yeah. The one on that side. There's two of them, yeah. All right. Sorry? Sorry? No, no, just the one right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I haven't shown that in a while because it can never get in the car. <laughs> so I got, I got my hands on a van and I was able to, I'm going to get my hands on a van and I was able to get it. Now, I'll show you this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend the tree and then tighten the wire. So I have to look at it, unfortunately, otherwise I won't be able to do it. So I'll so get my hands right. This is a bit tricky showing and trying to do this. Yeah. Actually, who wants to hold this turntable for me? Is someone keen to not get their hands dirty? Just hold that turntable nice and free. Thank you. Sometimes it's good to have two people to do this and you can watch up close. Yeah. That's a bit tricky. Hang on. Just got to get my hands in the right position. Thank you. Beautiful. Now that's it. I have to get my two hands together. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Give her a hand. Thank you. When you don't have someone to help you, you know those um, clamps? G clamps? Clamps, yeah, G clamps. They're just a hardware tool. And you put the clamp here to here and you just tighten it and it squeezes it and you wire it. It's so easy. <laughs> I don't have those. <laughs> yeah. So you can see with one, now I've got it like my hands like a clamp. I can clamp it pretty easy and I just bend it. Now I'll just show you what I've done. Let's get this back in the right position. Now, I couldn't bend it before, but using this, see how there's a bend in it? It's actually bent quite, quite all the way down. Okay, that's why that's really good to use. Because I couldn't bend it with the wire, but I bent it with a guy wire. <laughs> now it's just a matter of, I'll position the branching. Now I'll just create a tree out of this bit and I'll show you what we're going to do with this bit. And this is just a matter of now what you like, how you like the tree to look. It's going to be a lovely little cascade. Semi-cascade, sorry. Yeah. Always and always do three-dimensional trees. Okay, when you style trees, don't do left and right. You also have to have something at the back, something maybe at the front, at this front. It's almost like a corkscrew. If you go up the tree corkscrew, it branches all around. So it's 3D. Okay, three-dimensional trees. Just takes practice as well. At the start, I did create a few two-dimensional trees, but I didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's so a nice little thing to remember when you're, when you're doing working on them. I'm just doing a bit of reduction because it's a bit full in terms of foliage. It's just a bit too much. And as I said, I want you to get, if you get this home, it's going to be back in this pot and it's just a matter of just keeping it watered, enjoying it for a while until we get to August where we can repot it if you want. 
All right, now, I'm pretty much finished the tree in here, but we haven't dealt with this, right? Now, you can't see the entire... I've put this as, like, positioning where the front to look at it. All right, now, I'll show you. So, you can see there's something here, like a little tree in here. But there's this huge thing. What are we going to do with it? All right. So, I'm going to start cutting some branches off, all right? And hopefully, you start to see the tree uh, come to life. Alright, so you're starting to see it, barely. What if I keep going? Well, that was a good shot. Now, who wants to do the honours? Is someone keen? Do you want to, someone want to cut it off? I'm going to cut this off. You know, can't you want to, uh, just go in, in there, come in there and snop it off. You see how nice these branch cutters are. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Easy. Yep. Go for it. How's it going? Do it. Got it? No, no strength? No. No strength? Oh, it's all right. Go, let's try it. Here you go. Go. You can get it. There you go. I'll help you. Nice one. Yeah. So that's what. Now, can you kind of see the tree now? Little semi cascade. I know there's this bit here, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the gin here. But um, I'll fix it up, but you can see how nice the little tree came out of it. Much nicer than having a tall tree, twin trunk. I think this will be a much better. Well, I think anyway. <laughs> that's pretty cute, actually. Hey, that's pretty good. I do like, just want to shorten it a little bit. And now with the gin, I've got too much wire there, so I'll take this much off. So this bit, I'm going to put a gin. So what I normally do, because I'm going to kill, remove this bark, I do a ring, it's called ring barking. I'm just going to like do a little cut around this, the, the cut around the branch just to get rid of the cambium layer, the outside layer. So what, what that does, when I, when I get rid of this bark, it won't go too far down and kill this bit off. And so all I do now is get my gin pliers and I'll come in and I'll squash, squash the branch. Can you see what's happening? They always look good. Junipers look great. And then I just peel the squash parts that I squashed. And where I cut, it should just peel away. See how I just peeled away and didn't go past down, further down? So there's a gin that's pretty rough, but I'll clean that up. I only, have, I only like having little short gins, actually. Yep. All right, there's my little tree. This is the front. So semi-cascade, short this side. This is a small side. The tree's going in this direction. I'll spin it around. You guys can have a closer look. That's called a semi-cascade style. Yes, it's not a cas full cascade. It's go all the way down. It's just slightly lower than the pot. There would be a pot height there, slightly lower. And that's roughly where it is. So it's a really nice little tree. Get a nice little pot for it. Maybe a little square or oval, deepish, so it sits there about that size. Very nice. Any questions? Is it doable or is it just a bit of imagination and a bit of practice and a bit of wire and just seeing seeing what you can play with? I was very lucky. I had a really nice low branch. That's a really hard to get a nice low branch on these junipers. If you find them, buy them a nice low branch. Usually they're just too tall and all the top and it's all in the top. But when you get a nice low branch, you can create these little semi cascades and it's almost a mini size. It's really nice and small. Hold in one hand really cool so that's what it comes out to be after an hour oh look at that under an hour what do you guys any questions i'm happy to answer 
pretty. That won't take long at all. That's if you keep maintaining it, they grow so fast, and love a little semi. <laughs> yeah, love a little tree. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you put it in a bonsai pot, it won't grow that much more. Not not the base. It'll just slowly grow. Well, well, if you put it in the in these pots or bigger, you know what you can grow in that versus a bonsai pot is two or three times more in this so than in a bonsai. Place, right? Keep it in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it'll take a long time, but these don't naturally do the nabari. No, don't naturally grow the roots, so it'll take a while. But it's doable. Definitely doable. But that's a nice little tree that I can go hold in my hand. You know, that, that's the kind of... I'll put it on the angle that I want. And there's, there's the tree. Cool, huh? Any other questions? No? Oh, which one? I'll start cutting in. You can actually see the wire cutting in to the tree. And when you start seeing it cutting in, um, time to cut it off. And that's why these come in really handy because that's impossible to unwind. That's impossible. And you can damage it. So if I go in there, I go snip, 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 and it just falls off. And that's it. You're done. You know, that's why these are good. Uh, but yeah, it'll start cutting in. It'll take a while because I've reduced quite a bit of a lot of the foliage. If I left that on there, if I left that on there, this tree will grow. This is a lot of foliage, right? And the sun and photosynthesis and all that will make this explode, make that all explode, and they'll just cut in too much. And most likely this will die because this has got all the energy going this way. But now that we've removed that, all this is going to get the energy and it'll just keep growing nicely. But you'll see the wire cutting in, definitely, 100%. That's the best thing. Keep observing at least six months. You don't even have to look at it for six months, honestly. Just keep it watered, in the sun, healthy. It won't be cutting in for six months at least. And it'll probably start cutting more in at the top because that's what gets all the sun and growth. We'll start cutting in at the top. What size did you use I just used two mil or two and a half in, in aluminium. Usually with guy wires, I use copper because copper is stronger and I only have to use very fine, but you can't get copper, very hard to get copper now. But I've got, obviously I've got some, but yeah, I use copper. It's just copper holds a bit better when I start to twist. Um, it, it won't snap, aluminium can snap, so I have to use a little bit thicker, like two and a half mil. Um, with aluminium, I can use one and a half mil, for example, to do the same job. And it looks a bit cleaner. So I use six mil for the main trunk and then around threes for the branches. So, you know, dropped half. Oh, this, it's in the club. Yeah. <laughs> Club's got everything. We, we, we get it from people who, you know, sell it, like we're wholesalers who sell to us and we sell it to the club, you know. So Bunnings don't have it. I don't think they do. Well, they got very small portions. That, uh, we got 250 grams, 500 grams, 100 grams, you know, they're decent, decent amount. So like you buy, I don't think we got kilos, but, but 500 grams is probably the biggest we got. Mm. How's that? Everyone happy? All good? Nice? All right. Thank you. Come have a look. No worries. Enjoy. Thank you.